bringing live stacking into SETI Astro Suite. Welcome to SETI Astro. All right, if you haven't gotten the newest release yet, be sure to go to SETIastro.com under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite. We're now up to version 2.17, and there'll be a button to get it here. and It'll take you to a GitHub repository where you can get it for your operating system. All right, along with uh, live stacking, if you haven't gotten uh, any updates recently here, Cosmic Clarity also supports an automatic detect for the, the PSF, which will detect the PSF in each individual chunk as it's uh, doing the non-stellar sharpening. Uh, so you'll need to get the update of Cosmic Clarity as well. And the UI has been resized for support on lower resolution monitors. Uh, before you couldn't shrink it nearly enough. And you'll notice things like when you go into curves now, it'll pop curves out in its own separate thing so it is compatible with some of those smaller resolution monitors. This was the big thing. Pushing the UI too big, and it'll just go away when you click the next tab. But let's get into live stacking. So I've been asked to, to get this done for a bit now. Um, and you're gonna be able to select a folder, load a master dark, a master flat. You can process all the images in the folder and then start monitoring that folder. Or if you already got files in there from previous sessions and you just want to monitor for new files, you can click monitor only. You can stop the monitoring and reset. There is a wrench icon here, uh, which has the, the switch to the Mu Sigma clipping. So right now it's set for 24 frames. We're going to talk about that in a second. And then the clip threshold is your standard uh, Sigma threshold. There's buttons for zoom in, zoom out, fit to window, a show metrics we're going to look at as well. And then for display purposes, uh, brightness and contrast enhancement. And if you want, you can send it to a slot for the processing, save it out if you want to show people it, uh, whatever the case may be. So let's talk about, let's talk about what this stacking is doing. Trying to do live stacking is a little interesting interesting with normal stacking you have the whole stack to work with so every pixel you have many 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 values so you can do robust statistical analysis on those pixels reject outliers the whole shebang right with live stacking you have no data yet you get your first image so for each pixel you just have one value so i know other stacking programs for live stacking just do a a running average or, or a linear average that's just gonna take your first image and depending on how many images you get, just tax on that additional one in, in a normal average. So if you just have, you know, like two for instance, that's just your normal, that's just your normal averaging. And then for the third one, now it's two thirds of the previous plus a third of the, the incoming one. Again, this is just, the, the normal definition of averaging. And then same with the fourth one, where it's going to be three fourths of the previous plus a quarter of the new fourth one. And it is just this, this running average you get. Well, the problem with that is you can't do any statistical analysis on that, right? It's just a running average. But in my live stacking, what we're doing is I actually store the first well, 24 frames you get, and you can adjust that. That's what that, that wrench has. That's what that cutover point is. So it's going to store the first 24 frames or 16 or 32 or whatever you decide. It's going to do the normal linear averaging like we're doing here, but then it's going to be able to utilize that mini stack of frames, that, that, those initial frames, and that's enough now that you can start having some robust statistics around the pixel stack. So you can calculate the, the mean, you can calculate standard deviations and things like that. And really nicely, there's a method called Welford's online algorithm that is developed just for situations like this, where you wanna maintain a running statistical analysis of something, but you don't have the memory to store all the previous history and all the previous you know values in there so we can initialize it with you know the the mean being the first one there's a difference of squares accumulator 
And then as we start getting more and more frames in for each frame we get in, it allows us to update our new mean, our new standard deviation, our new accumulator values, such that we can now have a running statistical update so we can use rejection at this point. So now, once we are past the cutover point, we could use Welford's online algorithm to continuously update our statistical model. We don't have to keep a whole big stack of images anymore. So the most we'll ever see in the stack is at first 24. Once we get the statistics off that, we wipe that from memory completely. We don't need it anymore. And we continuously update our statistics as we move forward. And now as new frames come in, if you have pixel values that are outside in the in the default, the 3.5 sigma away from the mean, now it's going to be able to reject those, just like a standard rejection algorithm. And again, at the very bottom, you know, importantly, it doesn't have to store all those past samples. So we still get robust statistics with rejection, and it's, it's still a live stack. So let's jump into our live stacking now, now that we have some basis for this additional statistical robustness that we're going to add to our live stack and, and see what we're going to do with it. So I have live stacking open. And the other nice thing is it runs in its own thread. So you can actually be over here doing other stuff with other images while your live stacking's just kind of doing its thing. So let's go ahead. I'm going to select a folder. I have a little live stacking test folder here. Uh, you can load darks and flats as well, so be sure if you have them to go ahead and load um, a master dark and a master flat if you have it. And then this will change these to these little green guys here to let you know those are loaded. Process and monitor, like I said, it's going to process all the images in there first and then start monitoring the folder. Monitor only, only is going to be looking for new files coming in. There's a frame count and and we'll see some fun stuff here. So let's let's get into it. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Now I already have uh, some files in my folder we're going to be monitoring. So I'm just going to click process and monitor. And at the bottom here, there's a little mode. Right now we're in the linear average mode. We haven't uh, accumulated enough data yet to switch over to the mu sigma clipping. Here's the first frame coming in and it's just going to start uh, stacking the ones that are already in there right now. And you can uh, zoom in, zoom out, fit to window, all those, all those fun things. So it's stacked now, those 11 frames that were in there. You can adjust the contrast if you really want to like crank it up and see the noise and stuff. And then brightness, you know, you could, you could play with the brightness. Just you know, to help you visualize what's going on with the stack. And then you can see the stacking artifacts off to the edges as those are essentially averaged out, right? And we're only looking at the, the stuff that's, that's core in the stack. The other really cool thing is if you click show metrics, it's going to give you metrics uh, as, as running totals here. So you have frame number down here. It's calculating the full width half max for your stars. It's calculating the eccentricity for your stars. You can see the star count as you're going along. And then I also have a signal to noise estimate here. If you've watched my video on signal to noise or deep sky details or Dylan O'Donnell, you know that there's a lot of discussion around noise and what we're measuring and, and how to actually measure noise and, and what it even means. Um, so I do put in parentheses, this is gonna be proportional to your SNR. What I'm doing specifically is taking the center 50% of the whole image so you don't get any of these stacking artifacts in the calculation. I'm calculating another patch in the middle here as a smaller representative of that larger 50% patch. And then for the big patch, we're calculating the standard deviation for that whole thing. And for the smaller patch, we're calculating the mean and then something I'm calling new. So it's mu and new. So mu minus new. New is going to be the median minus three times the current sigma times the median. 
what that is going to do is it's going to clip off the bottom stuff that astrophysically speaking is beyond three sigma below the, the median and is just complete noise. So we're setting that essentially at our, our black point for our little SNR ratio calculation. So you have mu minus nu divided by sigma. These numbers are going to be lower than what you probably traditionally see in other stacking software. Uh, usually because when they're doing those SNR calculations, they're just looking at the, the brightest uh, one percentile usually. It's the stars. SNR of the stars is going to be pretty high. What this is doing is actually taking that section in the middle and based on the distribution of how signal works in our telescopes, the mean is going to be higher than the median. And we're clipping off a chunk of that mean then, so the mu minus nu. So we're really looking at the signal of the of the faint stuff. So you're gonna see here the first couple frames, one and two, we weren't even above one yet. So the noise actually was larger than the mean signal in the image. And then as we get three, four and above, you're starting to see our signal come up above that noise floor. It's starting to have that traditional square root shape, which is what we would expect. Again, this is going to pro be proportional to SNR. SNR is a, is a local thing, right? If you draw a little tiny box around the core of the galaxy, that's gonna have a much higher SNR than some random spot over here, just with either IFN or faint wisps of the galaxy, or you know, just a random spot in the sky. And none of that is going to have nearly as high of SNR as an actual star. So that's why uh, these global SNR calculations are, are always hard to do in a graph. But this, <laughs> no, maybe I went in, went into the weeds too much. But that's that's what this curve is. So let's. Um, I'm actually going to restart this with just one frame in here. We'll boost the contrast up, and then I'm going to add a bunch. And you're going to see the frames tick over. You're going to see where the mode switches over to start using Welford's online algorithm for rejection and you're going to see the noise smooth out really nicely. So here we are with one frame. I cranked up the contrast so we could really see the, the noise and stuff. Now we're gonna really be able to see what's going on with this. One other thing I forgot to mention, it will debayer. So these are all one shot color images that were bayered. It does the debayering automatically. If they're gonna be mono images, it keeps them mono. All right, and now we're gonna start seeing the stack happen. You're gonna see the noise come down and our metrics are running in real time here as more and more frames are getting added, just like you would be doing during a live stacking session so you can see the results and, and how things are shaping up. You're also gonna see now at frame 24, it crosses over. Now we're doing the, the Mu Sigma clipping using Welford's online algorithm to update our statistics in real time. So now we're in the regime where it's actually doing normal pixel rejection like what you would expect from a stacking program. All right, we now have 46 frames in here. And you can see the, the galaxy starting to come through a lot nicer. Even maybe turn down the, the brightness so we can start seeing some of that structure in a little bit more. I'm going to start adding even more. All right, and when you've captured enough images that you're, you're, you're satisfied with what's going on with it, you can go ahead and just push it to a slot. So let's go ahead and say send to slot. We'll send it to slot zero. And like I said before, you could actually start monitoring a new capture and this can be completely manipulated off over here. You can do cropping with it while that's monitoring over there. You know, whatever you want to be doing with the images you captured um, as some processing while you're capturing live stacks. The other thing I do want to mention as well is the stack when you're done is 32 bit. Everything. I, you know, most telescopes, the files are saved as 16 bits. They're all converted to 32 bits. 
to be ran through this. So you don't have any worry about um, some kind of a 16-bit limit. Everything's in 32 bits um, for, the, for the stacking. Well, I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this. I think this is a, a really cool thing you can do for star parties, or even if you just want to watch your own data, trickle in and play with it, uh, process it as you're, as you're getting some of it. You could always just stop the monitoring, reset, you can switch it to monitor only and just start watching new stuff come in as your telescope's bringing it in. Well, like I said, I, I hope you all have fun with this. Please comment, like, and subscribe.